It is February 24, 2016 at 8.56 hours. Uh, present is Detective Stuart McGuffin with the Arizona Department of Public Safety Special Investigation Unit, as well as Detective Michelle Vasey um, and Captain Philip Johnson with the Major Crimes. Um, the person to be interviewed is Sheriff Joe Arpaio, and we are at the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office headquarters located at 550 West Jackson in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, this interview pertains to DPS report number AZ15000147490. Sir, this is a um, voluntary criminal interview. You may end the interview at any time you desire. You may request breaks during the interview as needed. Um, this interview is recorded, and this is a fraud investigation in which you are a witness in the chain of command. Uh, sir, for the tape, what is your full name? Joseph M. A. R. P. A. I. O. And your occupation? Sheriff Maricopa, Maricopa County, Arizona. And what is a... Um, good business telephone number for you, sir. Well, you can get my secretary, uh, 602-876-1829. And um, what was your date of employment with the sheriff's office? January 1, 19... No, wait a minute. January 21, 1993. And do you have a badge number here? No. Okay. I have one. I don't know what the number. Maybe one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and as the sheriff, um, who do you report to? The people. Okay. Um, and how long have you been in your current assignment? Been what? How long have you been in your current assignment? Going on 24 years. And what are your current job duties? As sheriff? Yes, sir. Uh, well, uh, the uh, role of the sheriff, uh, we run the jails. Uh, we do the law enforcement, uh, mainly uh, in uh, unincorporated areas. Plus, we have uh, about 10 contracts with local cities, towns. Uh, I'm going to move this up. And, uh, <coughs> but I have jurisdiction everywhere 9200 square miles plus i believe one 4.1 million people live in the county and um during the interview i'm gonna when i say makowitz i'm gonna refer to detective brian makowitz um where is makowitz currently assigned i believe he's uh in uh, enforcement support and in that position what are his job duties I believe he's supervising uh, our reserves, our uh, deputy reserves. And what is Makowitz's current chain of command? Well, he would report to the uh, lieutenant, I believe, in enforcement support. Or a sergeant, I'm not sure. Okay. And then prior to this position um, in supervising the reserves, where was Makowitz assigned? I believe he was on uh, special assignment uh, in uh, Seattle, working a fraud case. Um, for that fraud case, how was um, Makowitz selected for that investigation, that assignment? Well, he was selected, uh, once again, my recollection would be the uh, chief deputy uh, because of his uh, experience. The chief deputy selected him? I believe it was him. There could have been recommendation from lower level, but it was uh, mainly the chief deputy who approved it. And the chief deputy is? Jerry uh, Sheridan. Um. And how were you involved with the Seattle investigation? Well, I wasn't uh, uh, involved in the nuts and bolts. Uh, at times, they uh, would give me a status report. 
And that was about it. And who directed the Seattle investigation? I believe it was uh, the uh, chief deputy and maybe uh, Captain Bailey, who was in investigations. Who did Makowitz report to during that investigation? Once again, I'm not sure whether he reported to the chief deputy or the uh, captain uh, in charge of criminal investigations, or both. Uh, he may have been talking to both of them. Um, and who was... Or what was the chain of command for Makowitz during that investigation? Once again, I believe he was dealing with the uh, chief deputy, okay. Sheridan, because of the sensitivity of what was going on. What were Makowitz's um, orders and job duties during the investigation? Well, he's an, uh, an investigator. Did you directly give Makowitz any orders during the investigation? No. Um, do you know who did give orders to Makowitz during that investigation? Once again, uh, I'm not sure uh, who was uh, in direct contact as far as the uh, advising him uh, how to uh, do the investigation. Or what have you? I, I do know that uh, uh, he had quite a bit of history working on uh, many threats on me. Uh, it has been very successful on arrests and convictions, and uh, he uh, was a type of guy that did not need that much uh, supervision. Very experienced and hard working, so. I'm not sure how much supervision he got uh, regarding the Seattle case because of his history working cases uh, on threats mainly. That was my main concern uh, when he, uh, when I had threats, he was the one to go to guy uh, to get these people arrested. Um, what is the or is there a precedent, or what is the precedent for out-of-state investigations um, conducted by the MCSO? Well, we, uh, especially the threats, many of them came from out-of-state, and of course we developed the uh, investigations and followed the leads into other states, and, uh, and some of them resulted in arrests working with the uh, local authorities up there, of course, but we, Makowitz sort of was the lead guy uh, in these investigations, regardless of where they were at. Okay. Um, had Makowitz been on prior investigations out of state? Yes. Um, during the Seattle investigation, was Makowitz directed um, to do whatever it took to complete this investigation? Whatever it took? I don't know if anybody said do whatever it takes. I would presume that uh, uh, it was important, but I don't know if anybody said do whatever you have to do. I'm sure that he knew what he had to do. Um, was Makowitz directed not to return to Arizona until the investigation was complete? I don't know. Um, did Makowitz provide you updates of the case? Uh, very seldom. I believe he was dealing with the... Uh, Chief Deputy, and maybe the uh, head of our criminal investigation division. Did you review um, any reports or paperwork generated by Makowitz during this investigation? 
I think there was one report, maybe at the end, that uh, kind of a summary uh, that I may have looked at, but there was I, I didn't see any reports uh, during the course of the uh, investigation, if there was any. And then, how does Makowitz account for his time or time cards during the investigation in Seattle? Well, I'm not involved in that either. Okay. Uh, I, uh, even on the threat investigation, which uh, I didn't get involved in money or time or anything else, uh, uh, I know he put in a lot of hours, but it did not affect me or my thinking uh, as to how many hours or whatever. My main concern was getting the investigation uh, accomplished and uh, he usually did most of it on his own we didn't have squads of uh, detectives so I know he put in a lot of time um, did you question the amount of overtime Mackwitz claimed on this investigation no uh, do you know if anyone did question the amount he's from MCSO in his chain of command? Mm -hmm. Not that I can recall. Okay. Um, do you know, was the amount of overtime claimed on this investigation uh, normal? I don't know how much overtime he claimed. And as far as the um, informant is concerned, if um, if Makowitz was with the informant, um, would that be considered on-duty time? Of course. Okay. I wouldn't, I would imagine it would be. Um, were there any parameters um, set as far as what I mean by that? Would, if he was um, at a winery or at a bar and the informant was there with him, would that be considered on-duty time? Well, I imagine it would. I, I, I go back to my history of 55 years in uh, the federal uh, DEA cop, but I, I've dealt many times undercover with informers or dope peddlers, so that's not uh, unusual for me uh, thinking as how to uh, develop investigations. So if you have to deal with informers any time, uh, any time, I used to do it at midnight, call my house and everything else, so that's, that's law enforcement. You can't control hours when you're uh, dealing with informers sometimes. Um, was Mackowitz allowed to be um, at the wineries while on duty during this investigation? I, I didn't have any uh, contact regarding that. Was Mackwitz allowed to consume alcohol while on duty? Well, I would imagine, uh, once again, uh, with my history, and I'm speaking of my experience in law enforcement, and, uh, uh, but uh, if you're trying to develop an investigation uh, with an informer, I would imagine that uh, if you have to have a drink with them, there's nothing wrong. I don't think that uh, is against our policy. Um, that was what. What is the MCSO policy on consuming alcohol while on duty? Well, I believe when you're in a situation when you're undercover or developing uh, uh, information, uh, that you can do it. I haven't read the policy. Was Makowitz undercover? Was he considered an undercover officer? Well, not when he was dealing with the informer. When he was or when he wasn't? No, I, he wasn't undercover when he was dealing with the informer. Okay. But once again, you're developing information with the informer. And uh, sometimes you don't do it in an office. For sure, for sure. Yeah. Understood. Um, what what are MTSO's policies and procedures um, cons concerning informants um, being like in this paid? Well, first, I guess was 
was Montgomery considered a paid informant? Yes. Okay. Um, so what would be um, the policy for Makowitz while dealing with, um, I guess, if, if Mac, while Makowitz was out of state on, um, would there be any specific guidelines or directions for dealing with the informant? You know, once again, you're asking me, but I delegate uh, this to my support and, okay. and, and uh, policies and so on. So I didn't get involved with policies or, or payments or anything else. I, I, it didn't even enter my mind because uh, I know that he was very aggressive. And, and I go back to the, all the threats uh, that he did. That was his main mission, threats on me and other government officials. So I never thought of how much money. My main objection, of course, was to catch the suspects. So as far as I'm concerned, I didn't get involved in the nuts and bolts of how much money or how he was spending it. Do you have a personal relationship with Makowitz? The only personal relationship I have is with my wife. I don't have personal relationships with my employees. I, I respect my employees when they do a good job and they work hard, but I don't go out drinking or houses and that type of thing, parties and all that. So no, no socializing outside of work? No. Yeah. While Makowitz was in Seattle, did you ever actually personally have uh, phone conversations with him regarding the case? And if so, would that be considered on duty? Well, I, I don't know how many conversations I had weren't that many, but he would call me once in a while. I'm not sure whether I ever called him, uh, but I was dealing more with Mike Zulo, who was on that investigation and other investigations, too. And Mike Zulu, he was the, the posse member? Commander of the cold case posse. Commander of the cold case. So with Mike, when um, there was an issue that came up with Brian um, Makowitz's overtime and the amount of overtime, uh, his sergeant was sent there. I believe it's England, Travis England, was sent there to kind of oversee it. Um, and I guess there was an issue between Zulu and the sergeant. Do you know who pulled the sergeant out of Seattle? Well, the, uh, Jerry Sheridan was handling all of that uh, situation, but once again, I don't know what the captain's role was, too. But Jerry Sheridan, more or less, because sensitivity was dealing with uh, Makowitz. Okay, so that I can recall. So, chain of command wise, it would have been Captain Bailey, you, and Sheridan that were really the only ones that knew about it or had a right to know about this case. I would believe uh, it would be the chief deputy and maybe Bailey, but we were keeping it somewhat quiet uh, because of the sensitivity. And uh, once in a while I would get a little update, but that was it. Uh, and when you, when you would get these updates, did you ever give any orders after that to Mac Witz on his role or what he should do? No, I don't give orders uh, to my subordinates uh, how to uh, do an investigation. Normally, I never do that. Um, 
Sir, are there any um, issues you wish to address that we did not cover? You mean on his overtime? Yes. <clears throat> Once again, I, uh, myself, I wasn't keeping track. Uh, number two, because of past history and his hard work, I never entered my mind how much it would cost. Uh, and I do know that, uh, as I mentioned previously, I didn't have a 10-man task force. He did most of it on his own, uh, these sensitive investigations. So uh, it, it didn't enter my mind with how much it cost because you know, I could have put five deputies uh, on, this, on the same case. Uh, but he uh, very aggressive, put a lot of time in, and it didn't enter my mind what it would cost. So the uh, it was going into that investigation or during the investigation, um, uh, the large amount of man hours was expected, and or that's the cost of doing business when you only have one detective assigned to that type of case. Yeah, but I once again it it uh, it didn't enter my mind as to uh, what it would cost. He, I, I know he would work around the clock if he had to to get the job done, but that was his history. And I go back again that I had contact with him uh, on several occasions. When there's a threat on me, I like to know what the progress is. So I would talk to him about that once in a while, not every day, just to see what the progress is. But never, uh, the only thing I knew, he was a hard worker and got the job done. And, and uh, if it costs money, it costs money. In regards to... I, I understand that uh, MCSO does have policies when it comes to drinking on duty and undercover policies and things of that nature. Um, I've worked in four months. We know what it takes to, to do that, and there are occasions when you're in a situation where alcohol is involved. Uh, but with policies, would do you agree that if you were to be intoxicated and it goes past the point of that, is that a violation of MCSO policy? You, you mean when he's undercover or dealing with an informer where he gets drunk doing so? Correct. I don't know. I don't, every case is different. Uh, I mean, if he got drunk to save a life, I don't know if it would be worth getting drunk or not. So I <laughs> I don't know. Uh, you know, if he had to stay there and had 10 beers because the informer's drinking 10 beers, he want to.